In the previous video, we covered the principle of inclusion and exclusion. We covered some interesting examples from many different good problem sources. In this video, we're going to discuss stars and bars. Now, stars and bars is very clever. Basically, what it says is that if we have n objects, and they all have to be the identical objects, and we're dividing them into k, let's say, bins. It could be anything, but in this case, bins. Let's say there's n objects and k bins. Now, the idea is that rather than dividing it up like this, doing casework or whatever, we can just treat them as bars. So we can treat the bins as being divided by bars. So for example, if we have five, if we have five, let's say, I don't know, apples, and we want to divide it amongst three bins, if you put two bars, then what we can do is we can say anything to the left of the first bar goes to bin one. Anything in between goes to bin two. And anything in bin three, or right to right of the second bar, goes into the third bin. And make sure to remember that the objects must be identical and the bins must be different. So n identical objects, k distinguishable bins. And there's this formula, but you don't really need to memorize it. Just understand how the logic behind stars and bars works. Okay, let's take an example. So for some particular value of n, when a plus b plus c plus d plus 1 to the power of n is expanded, and like terms are combined, the re resulting expression has 1001 terms that include all four variables to some positive power and we're asked to find what is n. Now you might be, might be wondering, how is this stars and bars? Well, notice that when we're taking this to the power of n, each term will have a to the something, something, b to the something, c to the something, d to the something, and 1 to the something. And it'll be a product of these terms. The reason is, is that, let's, see, let's just try it, a plus b plus c plus d plus 1, a plus b plus c plus d plus 1, and so on, let's say. We're always taking, when, we're multi when we multiply them in our expansion, we're taking one of these values, one of these values, one of these values. Every term is like that. It takes one of the values from the expansion and you're multiplying them. And however many a's we take, that's this exponent. However many b's we take, this exponent. And even one matters. One will have this exponent here. But the problem is saying that 1001 terms that include all four variables a, b, c, and d to some positive power. So how can we think about this in terms of distributing? Essentially, we have n terms and powers of this product here. So we have n, well, terms to distribute amongst these exponents. The reason is that these exponents will sum to n. Why? Because each time we take one, there's only n total terms. So we only have the, each of these choices, the number of each of these choices sums to n. Okay, so how do we distribute this? We have five things to distribute from. So let's say we have n, we can represent this as having n balls and four dividers, but it doesn't really matter. They're all the same situation here. Where, where anything to the left here would be the a's exponent, however many number would be here. This would be b's exponent, c's exponent, and finally, d's exponent would be to the right of this third bar. Essentially, it's the same thing because we're dividing it just like we would divide balls amongst bins like I showed earlier. But we have a condition here. Terms that include all four variables, a, b, c, and d. So, what if there's no, let's say, no dots here? Then a is equal to zero. But that means it won't include the term a, because a to the zero is just one. So essentially, what this is saying is that there must be at least one dot in each of these sections. At least one dot per section. So in total, we have n, n things, or n dots in this case, to distribute, and four sections. So, and we can automatically assign one dot to each section. 
It's a designated one. It cannot go away. And then the remaining n minus 4 will be, distri be distributed amongst the remaining bars. And I forgot to add the 1 here. And anything right here will also be here. And 1 does not necessarily have to have a dot. Because 1 can be anything. It's not a A, B, C, or D. So we have n, n minus 4, n minus 4 dots to distribute after assigning 1 dot to each of A, B, C, or D. n minus 4 dots to distribute. And then 4 bars. So essentially now we have n spots n spots, and we choose four of them for bars. So n, choose four. n spots because n minus four dots to be distributed in four bars. So n choose four must be equal to 1,001. Because that's how many terms must exist. So if n choose four must equal to 1,001, how can we find the value of n? Well, a good trick to note here is that n choose 4 is just n times n minus 1 times n minus 2 times n minus 3 times n minus 4. Oh, I include an extra one here. Just n over this, over 24, equals 1,001. So this product is 24,024, 24 times 1,001. So now notice, notice that this is approximately n to the 4, right? Approximately n to the 4. And this is 24,024. And if we take the fourth root of this, or let's just take the square root of this for now, we can see that this will be about 0 at the end if you have two digits. The left digit squared, will, the left digit will make up these right two digits. So we, let's just add a 0 because 24 is negligible. So now the square root of 24,000 is just... The square root of 24,000 is just 10 times the square root of 240. And if you know your squares, you know that 15 squared is 225, 16 squared is 256. So it's about 15.5-ish. So let's just say this is about 155, roughly. And then we take the square root of 155. If you know the squares again, you will see that this is approximately, it's in between 12 and 13. But that's n to the 4. So some number in between 12 to the 13 to the 4th power will be equal to this. We're doing n times n minus 1 times n minus 2 times n minus 3. So we need a number a little bit bigger. And we want our average value to be somewhere between 12 and 13. So we can say this is 12, this is 13, this is 14, this is 11. Let's try n equals 14. But we'll check it just to be sure. We won't just assume it's true. Then we have 14, 13, 12, 11 over 24. Cancels, cancels. This becomes a 2. This cancels to become a 7. This is 7 times 11 times 13. And that's the common prime factorization. That's 1001. So indeed, n is equal to 14. And 14 is the answer. OK, so here's another clever application of stars and bars. But first, let's just quickly review how, how, what, the formula here. So essentially what this means is that we have n identical objects in k bins. So we have k minus 1 bars. k minus 1 bars and n of these objects. So in total, there's n plus k minus 1 spots. And of them, we must choose n of them to be odd objects. So n plus k minus 1 choose n. That's how we get the formula from. And you should know how it works because like we saw earlier, there's some conditions that we have to use. And now we'll see another example of using this condition, of using the logic behind stars and bars, not the formula, solve another variation of stars and bars. Three squirrels have to distribute 19 acorns amongst themselves. The first squirrel, demands to have a positive number of acorns, positive odd number of acorns. Second squirrel is fine with any non-negative even so number of acorns, so 0, 2, 4, but won't allow odd numbers. 
The third squirrel insists of getting at least four and an even number. How many different ways can they distribute the acorns? So how can we do this? It's odd even. What do we do with this? That's not, we don't know how to do stars and bars when it's odd even. Let's see, let's represent these as variables. Oh, so the first squirrel, positive odd number. So let's say it's 2a plus 1, where a is non-negative, so 0 or more. So if a is 0 or more, then 2a plus 1 can be any odd number. Second squirrel, any non-negative even number. Let's say 2b, where b is a non-negative number itself. So any non-negative number b will result in a non-negative even number of acorns. Third squirrel insists of getting even number greater than or equal to 4. So let's just say 2b plus 4. And the sum of these must be 19 or 2c plus 4. The sum of these must be 19. So 2a plus 2b plus 2c equals 14. And let's just divide by 2 because why not? a plus b plus c plus 7. Hmm, that looks a lot like stars and bars. Three things to distribute amongst 7. How, how do we distribute that? Well, let's say a, b, c. Two bars, seven dots, or whatever. Acorns, let's acorns. Or groups of two acorns, in this case. So, in this case, it's just going to be nine, choose two. Nine spots, choose two bars. Nine, choose two, equals 36. The final answer for this problem. Okay, next off. We're going to look at combinatorial identities. We've got binomial identity, van der Mondes, Pascal's, but that'll all be in the next video, which you can click on right here.